Okay, I'm sitting uh, today with Daniel Watson from Vertec IT Services because, well, lots of stuff's gone digital. Um, I was kind of envisioning reams of A4 paper sitting in museums because lots of us are moving everything online and doing stuff from our computers and working remotely sometimes as well. So cyber is probably a super important thing um, to be thinking about in the protection of your data and your clients' data and your staff's data. So Daniel, thank you for taking the time to sit with me this oh, afternoon, yeah, Jim, late yeah. on a Friday. I'd like to think it's important. Yeah. I'd like to think that my clients think it's important too. Yeah. Well, you probably built a business on that premise. Hope they're hoping that uh, people get it. Yeah, I mean, I, I spend a lot of my time um, doing the education piece because mm -hmm. if you don't know what you don't know, mm -hmm. you can't take actions that are appropriate, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Where, where, where should we go from there? Well, um, what kind of threats are people facing at the moment? Okay, so the, the, the big ones right now and continuing to be, you know, for third year running is ransomware. Mm -hmm. Uh, business email compromise and um, any kind of uh, phishing scams. Mm -hmm. um, SMS or text scams got a good look in um, during the, the latter part of 2021 mm -hmm. and there was it was fairly widely advertised um, where people were getting text messages mm. saying you've got a courier um, yeah. waiting at the depot but $3.50 is owing on it. You know, click this link to go through, pay the bill and get it released. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Certi and Z put out a fairly good set of recommendations on what you to do, mm -hmm. what you should do. And if you do get something like that, report it to 7726, I believe is the text code, forward the message on. Hmm. <laughs> um, and interesting, that same number works when you're in the States or an Aussie too. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, so um, of those, ransomware's, ransomware attacks have evolved. Mm -hmm. It's not just... They're trying to get money for decrypting your data. I'm assuming everybody kind of knows what a ransomware attack is mm, at this stage. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, the anatomy of a ransomware attack. Um, uh, through whatever means, usually an email, um, you are convinced to click a link or mm -hmm. run a file that's been sent to you uh, that executes a program which then progressively encrypts all the interesting files on your computer. Mm. Um, like all the doc docs, JPEGs, movie mm -hmm. files, anything, anything which isn't a system file generally, because they mm -hmm. want your computer to keep on running, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then it will pop up saying um, either a message or text file will be left inside the the directory in your in your folder, and it will say your files have been encrypted. Um, you can have them back. You will not be able to decrypt them, and you won't. Don't ask IT co companies to try and decrypt it for you because it's impossible. Wow. Yep. Um, and uh, pay X amount of Bitcoin to this um, Bitcoin wallet, mm -hmm. and we will send you the decryption key and software instructions. And sometimes they will, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's broken. Um, um, but that has evolved now in so much that... Um, once they've got you to click on something, that would generally give them a foothold on your computer. Mm -hmm. And then they will use the resources available to them under your login to see what other computer is available out there on the network. Uh, they'll reach out and try and encrypt those computers. Mm -hmm. um, they will look for interesting data like your financial records. Because mm -hmm. why put a standard amount of like, you know, equivalent of 500 US dollars for a, for a ransom mm. if they find out that you've got $26,000 in the bank account. Mm -hmm. Make the ransom $26,000. Mm -hmm. Cool. You can pay it. Um, uh, but they're also doing, besides the financial records, checking that out. They're looking out for um, interesting stuff like intellectual property um, that might be of resale value to them mm -hmm. um, and privacy information because then they can ransom the privacy data mm -hmm. and say, hey, we won't release this to the world if you pay us this amount of money. Mm. Right, so they'll they'll try and get multiple whammies out of it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's it is a business from their perspective. There are people that go to work in office buildings and in their office hours, and they get to work and they go out there and they try and scam people day in day out, and they get paid a salary, and the the criminal organisation that they're working for receives the vast amount of the profits. 
So that's what we're all <laughs> up against. <laughs> Sorry, it's awkward silence. That's shocking. Sorry. Because yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, this isn't my day-to-day. So, you know, I think, you know, we were talking before we went online but uh, about the old days where you've got your desktop with flashing um, bot things that they want you to yeah. click and you, those are so obvious. And they're too. just trying to get you to pay them 35 bucks for yeah. an antivirus or something like that. Yeah. But if they've already got to that point where they've hooked in a, Mm. You know, a, a, like a browser extension. You know, like I, I remember back in the way, back in the day, there was like an old fellow at a real estate um, company. He was a contractor, and every time he came and worked from the office, their their internet connections IP address went on a blacklist, and they could no they their email would stop being received by people because hmm. receiving mail servers would go, "You're a spammer." What? Because he just had so much. His, his machine was infested and then he was wandering <laughs> into this organization using their internet connection. Stuff's going out to the internet from their internet connection and getting, and they were like, it was a weird, um, like bystander type effects, <laughs> right? And then eventually just happened to be on the firewall at the time trying to figure it out. Because when he left, the evidence went away. He didn't like, <laughs> like trying to figure out what it was. It was really difficult because he'd only come in like for four hours a week. Yeah. He just happened to be on it this one time when he was there and I was like, oh, what's that? And then tracked it down. I went, oh, he's, uh, oh, he's in there. And it was one of those unfortunate moments where his daughter worked in the same organisation. And when she asked me later on, well, what, what happened with Dad's laptop? I said, ah, uh, <laughs> okay. So he's kind of been visiting a few websites that uh, he might not want you to know about. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh. Yeah. Anyway. On the company. Um, like fully 80% of his laptop screen was like extra toolbars that had been inserted by all sorts of crap. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, but most people aren't that um, susceptible these days. But mm. if they can get to that point, then they can take advantage of a lot more, mm. especially if you work in uh, an interesting organization. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. And so what are some of the simplest ways that people are leaving the door open for threats? Um. I would say it would be making the assumption that their IT is taken care of mm-hmm. or their cybersecurity is taken care of by their IT guy, mm-hmm. which may be the case. They mm-hmm. might have a good handle on it. Here's some ideas, symptoms about how you might not be uh, fully covered. If your IT bill comes to something like uh, $15 per person per month or less, then you probably don't have it taken care of, <laughs> right? Um, if you essentially have no IT budget and you only pay an IT guy once in a blue moon when you think something has gone wrong and needs a seeing to, Mm -hmm. you're not being covered. Mm -hmm. Because good IT management and good security management takes a fair amount of intentionality, Mm -hmm. right? And you're not going to get that from, um, you know, the the one-man band down the street who will install some antivirus and then wander off, right? Mm -hmm. IT security is more than just having antivirus, a firewall, and, and spam filtering. It, it, there, there are so many more um, control aspects. And if you're a one-man band, you might be able to get away with that for a fair amount of time. Mm-hmm. But if you're actually growing your business and putting some effort into it, then you are going to grow. And as soon as you start adding more employees, mm. your grip on whether you know Jane from Accounts has actually switched on to this kind of type of threat mm-hmm. is... is going to be reduced over time. It's just you can't have, you know, your fingers on all the pies. Yeah. So, you know, once you start getting above five people, 10 people, 15 people, one, the risk to the organization goes up because you've now built a whole bunch of momentum. You will mm. have probably bank loans, which you need to make sure you're paying off, right? Mm. You will, you know, you've got 15 people whose mortgages are now depending upon your business mm. carrying on to the future and, you know, giving them a pay rise or a bonus at Christmas or something, right? Mm. Um. And uh, you, you, it, it's, a, it's a real shame because I know that if you have a serious um, serious incident, whether it's f- internal fraud or malicious or, or just a serious accident, right, uh, some unintended uh, damage to your systems, mm-hmm. um, that could set you back two or three years in your business plan, mm. right? I mean, and time's the most precious thing we've got. Yes. Like, you know, you need to think about it as a risk management perspective, right? That's why you have insurance, right? Because you can... Mm. You can minimise as many of the risks as you can. Um, nobody's seriously thinking about avoiding, you know, uh, cybersecurity risks altogether, which would mean going back to pen and paper, mm. sending snail mail, and you know, paying with checks. Right? Nobody's doing that. Um, 
uh, so I've said mitigate, you can um, avoid, um, uh, you can transfer it to insurance, and the other one is accept it, right? Mm -hmm. You just accept the risk. But if you don't know anything about it, then you're probably sitting in the default category. You're just accepting whatever risk comes, but mm -hmm. you don't know what it is. So a lot of what I do is just talking to people about um, getting them to realize what those risks are mm -hmm. and what they could do to get themselves covered. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that answers your question of what's the most common one. Ransomware. That's still a big one. The method of delivery most likely is going to be through email. Mm -hmm. um, 70 to 85% of all the incidents come through that. And, um, yeah, that, that, that is uh, usually going to be a, a phishing scam that is using some kind of emotional triggers mm -hmm. to get you to do something that you might not normally do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what obligations do business owners have over their data? So you mentioned people are sitting going, oh, well, I accept that there's going to be risk, but mm -hmm. it's not quite that simple, is it? Okay, well, depending on the business, each, each business is going to consider um, what is valuable to them in, their, in, in terms of their data and their systems differently. Mm -hmm. For some organizations, it is literally the system because the process, right? They might own a manufacturing plant mm -hmm. and they have X number of computed um, CNC machines, you know, the the networked um, cutting machines into a computer. Da, 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 da. If somebody messes with that, their mm -hmm. production goes out the window, they can't operate for da, 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 and they might lose a contract, mm -hmm. right? Because it's pretty low margin, they need to pump stuff out. Um, if you're a uh, designer, it's might be your intellectual property, right? Mm -hmm. That's your critical asset. Um, if you're, say, in, I don't know, business loans, right? It's going to be your list of clients and mm -hmm. all their financial information, which you might collect a large amount of. Mm -hmm. And because of anti-money laundering, anti laundering laws, hmm, that was harder than I thought, <laughs> um, you, are, you have to collect a whole bunch of information. Mm -hmm. So how are you treating information? That gets out into the public. You are now legally required to advise a privacy commissioner that you've mm -hmm. had a breach. Right? You probably don't want to talk to them without consulting a lawyer, so that's going to get stake in expensive, right? Yes. And if you're having to notify all of your clients and you're probably going to, you know, if you've got a, if you've got 12, no mm. biggie, right? Mm. But if you've got 1,200, mm. you actually have a time frame that you have to notify them. So how are you going to do that? Oh, I'll have to get a telemarketer on there. I mean, it's going to cost you money. Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to say to them? You're just going to say, sorry, our bad, I cocked up. Nah, that might get you more liability, so you need to get a PR person. Right? Mm. See, none of this is IT costs. This is yeah, just yeah. dealing with the breach. Uh, and I, I guess, like, what we do in IT is we're trying to help our clients understand what are their crown jewels mm -hmm. and put in place the controls necessary in order for them to make sure they're going to stay secure. Mm -hmm. They don't, um, their confidentiality. Um, is kept, the availability of the data is there so they can keep the production flowing mm -hmm. and it's not messed with so the integrity is, is not um, uh, mm. destroyed, right? Because mm -hmm. it could be just as bad for the, somebody to come in and, and twiddle the numbers a little, mm. right? Depending on your business, right? So you need to have the confidence that your data is what it should be, not something else. Yes. Mm. Um, and... So one of the, I want to sidestep for a second sure. um, because this ties in nicely with a, another conversation that I had. Um, but there were updates, updates to the Privacy Act. Yep, 2020. Um, relating to, yeah, per personally identifiable information yep. um, and as a business owner, what, how you need to treat and preserve and protect that stuff. Mm. And a flow on from that is that there are consequences for not having looked after it appropriately. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not great consequences. Mm. I mean, they're not like, Oh man, soul destroyingly. I yeah. mean, this is a problem, like um, New, Ze uh, New Zealand, by comparison to many other countries, has a really wild, wild west environment <laughs> with regards to the regulatory environment. Mm. Uh, if you're in Australia or the or the EU, the UK, mm -hmm. um, the US, it is a lot stricter, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, the only people pushing hard for compliance, according to like any independent security standards or frameworks out there are the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And um, it's fairly iffy as to whether your insurance broker actually knows enough about 
cyber risk mm -hmm. to talk to you intelligently about it to get you to mm. to buy some. <clears throat> um, I, I know I come across some. I mean, my broker's great, um, and and some not all policy the same, mm -hmm. right? Because it's so like, what are they excluding? And you know, is, yeah. is this is this the kind of policy that you can drive a you know a double decker bus through that? And and the, when you go for claims time, they might just say, oh no, that, that was all excluded. Um, but one of the big things I've got to point out to people is that if you think your business interruption insurance that you have under your general insurance, foreign, foreign general insurance policy is going to save you mm -hmm. from a ransomware attack, remember before I pointed out that they don't attack the system files, mm. they want the operating system to keep running? Yeah. So foreign general, business interruption insurance only will step in if there is a physical loss of production. Oh. Is the computer still running? Yes, no power. So, and people don't get that. They think, yeah. well, if it's still, you know, like, oh, I can't work. So pay out. And they just go, no, read the, that line there. Yeah. Cyber risk is excluded. Yeah, wow. And the, one of the reasons is, is because our insurance companies are not making money on cyber. Hmm. Right? You might think, well, that's a lot of money I've got to pay out. Well, the reason is, is because they are paying out mm. nearly as much as they're bringing in. So it's not really making them much money. Hmm. So if they withdraw from the market in a couple of years, we shouldn't be entirely surprised. In the meantime, I'd encourage people to get it. Yeah. And then talk to their IT guy. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what does best practice look like? Okay. Um, best, pra best, best practice <laughs> looks like... What are you laughing for? That was a, that was a double entendre. Um, <laughs> best practice. <laughs> Best practice, what does it look like? Uh, I'd say it looks like starting with a conversation mm -hmm. between your, your IT person and the director where you ask them fairly general questions of how secure are we? Mm -hmm. um, my concerns are this. If mm -hmm. something like this happens, tell me how long would it take me to get the business back up and running? Mm -hmm. How much data might I lose mm -hmm. between then and then? You know, How far back in time can you recover a good copy? Um, and um, and if you carry on down that kind of vein of asking those questions, they will either start they will start responding to you with like, well, actually, well, no, we're not doing anything like that right now. Mm. Like I've been trying to sell, sell you on this for yonks, mm. but it's actually really hard to to you know roll something uphill. Yes, you know, so it's like yes. a lot easier if the director is saying, "Here are my concerns. I I, I want to be able to sleep at night. Yes, um, what do I need to do to make sure that if, you know, um, Jeremy down in the warehouse clicks on this email and something else happens, we're limited in the, in the amount of um, damage that can be done, right? Mm -hmm. And then a, a good idea, well, he, he'll, he'll be like going, awesome. Mm -hmm. Somebody's actually engaged in the conversation. Let's, oh, okay, well, well okay, um, we, we need to have a, like a, a hardware and asset register. For, you know, we need to know exactly what is your critical data on where does it sit who has access to it mm -hmm. um how are people accessing your systems are they accessing it remotely do you have a policy what what should they um you know are they using personal laptops do you let them use personal laptops mm. they are using personal laptops did you let them do that mm -hmm. well, yeah, because i know a lot of the stuff from covid has been it just happened because you needed to right because mm -hmm. you couldn't even buy laptops because places like the asb are just bought like five thousand and just yeah. emptied out the market in new zealand right so um, a lot of things got done because they're expedient, not mm -hmm. because they were the best things to do at the mm. time. And then we just got on with it and kept doing that. And That's right. probably yeah. come and talk to you once something's gone wrong. Yeah, because generally between IT, like day-to-day -day IT is basically about getting things working. Mm -hmm. um, security comes later. Mm. Like great outfits will incorporate that into uh, their operations um, but uh, usually it's kind of an afterthought. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that was. Probably Jordan's stomach, Googling. So how often should you be reviewing your security? Okay. Um, I would say um, at least annually. Mm -hmm. Quarterly if you're bigger. Mm-hmm. Right, there's a lot more moving parts in your organisation. You're having a bunch of churn. Mm -hmm. Then the the frequency of operations is that something will probably get missed, right? Mm -hmm. 
even the best IT companies, they'll follow each following checklists, something might get missed. That person might not be getting the spam filtering. That person might not be getting the security awareness training. Mm -hmm. So you want to review it um, and then like, um, it's good to have targets, right? So mm -hmm. you, if you've got policies that says like, everybody in the company must be um, uh, receiving security awareness training mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Great, cool. Um, audit it. Who has been actually doing it? Mm -hmm. Get the report. Ask the IT guys, can you print off a report for us? Tell us who's getting it. How many machines are up to date? Right? Uh, uh, is, the, is the patching being done? Has the, uh, the firewall been updated? Mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of stuff that happens in terms of um, newly discovered um, vulnerabilities in operating systems. And you know, like, um, your, your, your network camera has an operating system. Your printer has an operating system. Mm. Your phone has an operating system. Your tablet. They all have operating systems. They're all based, a lot of them are based around Linux, mm -hmm. um, which is an open source thing. So when something is discovered in one application, it's possible that it might actually be transferable to a whole bunch of other devices as mm. well. So um, all of that, it takes work, right? Mm. So if, you're, if your budget for IT is nil, mm. then a hopefully you're putting aside, you're self-insuring, you're putting aside some money to deal with that rainy day fund of, oh, shit's gotten hit the fan and I need to pay somebody to clean it, right? Mm. Yeah. So, mm. uh, yeah, quarterly is a good idea. Quarterly. Annually is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Note to self. Yep. Okay, and, um, yeah, so have you, yeah, well, my last question was, how do you review your security? Um, um, getting an independent audit is good. Mm -hmm. um, I knocked off about 15 in the last three months mm -hmm. for various clients. We, we do it um, annually for our clients who are on a flat rate uh, plan with us mm -hmm. because we know that we need somebody else to come in and just check what we're doing. Yeah. We do it to ourselves on a, like a quarterly basis to make sure that we're, we're actually secure because we're a big risk to our clients, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so... Yeah, doing, doing a regular penetration test and having somebody else um, independently uh, take a look at things. Mm -hmm. If you ask your, your IT guy to review your, your security, right, who he's been looking after, mm -hmm. um, one or two things is likely to happen. Um, one, he says, no, you're good. And then you go, oh, phew, mm. right? I don't have to spend any money. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, regardless of whether actually it's good or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, or or uh, two, he will just upsell you on the things that he knows to do. Yeah. Right. Um, which is not bad. Right. Cool. The the end result is that in that case, at least you'll end up with more protections than you probably had. Mm -hmm. um, but having somebody else coming in who's got a completely different perspective on it, mm -hmm. um, they will see things that neither of you will. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and can help steering it. And you can bat it. They can be batted straight back to the IT crowd to go. Well, like, hey, you need to fix up these things. Give them a quote. Mm -hmm. And crack on with it. Yeah. And is there anything that you want to leave us with? Uh, it's not all external attackers. Mm. Don't forget, one in five security incidents are internal. Can you go into that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. What's that? Uh, okay. Well, in my situation, I had an office manager who um, took a huge amount of liberties with um, the company money. Huh. About 58k over 16 months, um, and she uh, got to serve a custodial sentence. Mm -hmm. Although the advice I had from several quarters was just chuck it in, mm -hmm. just pay her out, get rid of her. Oh, she did an, an employee grievance against me as well for bullying and harassing behaviour. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was trying to get her to sit in a room with the accountant to go over like, what are these? Mm -hmm. Yep. So enormous amount of disruption. Right, mm -hmm. that that one event. I mean, I was still left, and and also the IRD bills weren't being paid, so um, I was still I uh, so I missing the money. Yeah, still had to pay the taxes. Yeah, then had to get forensic um, accounting services in. Mm. Then there was all the extra. I even had to I even had to pay for my accountant to sit in the witness box at the trial. Accountants out there, if you do that, you're a dick. Anyway. <laughs> Highly technical it's terminology. It's your civil duty. Yeah. It's your civil duty to sit in the witness box mm. and, and, and give testimony. That's why, I th anyway, 
paid the bill, didn't I? Anyway, <laughs> Kiwis don't like to make a fuss. Um, uh, so, yeah, that, that literally did set me back in my plans by about two years. And yeah. it wasn't just the 58K. There's all the extra money, mm-hmm. all the extra time. Spent loads of time working with the lovely young police constable who didn't know what zero was, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it helps to have somebody in the police that you know who can look at your complaint mm-hmm. and then restructure it in a way that it makes it really easy for an investigating constable to actually do something about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that person, she, um, uh, uh, Heather McHugh is the name, by the way. Um, uh, she got two years, nine months. Um, she had been known to the police previously. There were other business owners that turned up at the sentencing and were mm-hmm. quite happy to see her get taken down. Mm. Um, I think it was two weeks of testimony you had to go through. Mm. It's an incredibly boring process because <laughs> you literally have to read all the evidence. Mm. So, you know, 200 transactions plus out of the bank account, I had to read them out aloud. From the bank account number of this number to this number of this amount and the subject is this. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Multiple, multiple jury members fell asleep. Yeah. It's really hard to make that sound interesting. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so lots of lessons learned there. So I, that actually was a major thing in informing me of how um, we can better protect our clients mm-hmm. because it's not just the external threats, it's also the internal threats. And you can protect against those to an extent. Yeah, well, for us, one of, because we some of the um, IT security aspects that we already had in place were we don't share accounts. Mm-hmm. So... I do walk into businesses where they, as a matter of like policy, is that there is a file somewhere where everybody's password is in it. Why is that? Oh, so when they go on holiday, we can log in and get access to their files. Like going, okay, now just think about it. You're bringing a prosecution against somebody in your business, mm. and the defense lawyer asks you, did anybody ever have access to these credentials at any time? Mm. And if you say yes, they walk away mm-hmm. because somebody else could have logged in as them and done what they did, mm-hmm. right? So everything, you need individual audible accounts so that you can trace anything that's done on your network back to a particular person at a particular point in time. Mm-hmm. Because without that, it's really hard to prove who did what. Yeah. Yeah, And that's what it's going to come down to is going... This activity happened at zero at this time. This person logged in at this time. They logged out at this time. This person here. The correlation is this. Mm-hmm. Could anybody else have had access to this? No, this was the only person who had access to this. This was the only person who had access to this. Mm. Yeah. And then where was it transferred? Into her bank account. Yes, it was. In her bank account. It's really clear. right? Did she? Mm. Was there any policy that stated she would be allowed to do this? No. Mm. Right. You know, it's, it's getting into all that. Um, so it's better to, and this is a follow-on, a um, uh, 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 another um, accounts person that we had in the business, I mm-hmm. told them the whole story. And she said, look, I never want to be put in a position where you could even remotely accuse me of the same things. Mm-hmm. So she helped me. She put in a few extra structures, right? So um, she's, she, you know, your separation of duties. Yeah. Like she could set up payments, but she couldn't approve them. She could uh, create companies, mm-hmm. but she couldn't put the account numbers in. So, and all those things, whenever something did happen, it was provided with evidence so that I could check that that is actually that company's account number, mm-hmm. these kind of things. Mm-hmm. Is it a pain in the ass? No, not really. Mm. In fact, most of the stuff in security these days is not a pain in the ass because that used to be another thing like, yeah. oh, it's expensive and oh, I don't want to have the hassle of doing two-factor authentication. Mm. Mate, like, don't, just do it. It's, it, it's yeah. not that hard. Yeah. Really, it is. Once you set it up, you can make controls to make it easier but realistically, um, there are tools out there like password management tools that take away a whole stacks of risks that you would normally have to deal with by making sure that people have got a, an easy way to um, exhibit good password hygiene behaviour. Mm-hmm. Mm. And given that one in five of the threats comes from within, it's kind of high priority. Yeah. 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 It's just easier to talk about bad guys because you know everybody yeah. has an idea yeah People and they're behind a computer screen so you don't have any feelings about them but to feel that you've employed someone who's ripping you off or betraying trust that takes a little bit of self-reflection as well on how did i let that happen and that's kind of oh, a scary yeah. thing isn't it yeah and it, and it really is a, is a, mm. is a mental mind fuck because mm. 
you're going to be left wondering, oh my God, yeah, am I really a bully? Did I really harass her? Did I, was I a terrible boss? Yeah. Did I say something that she got the wrong idea that she thought she could? Yeah. Right? That, um, you know, like, oh my, I must have been such a fucking idiot. Yeah, how did I right? not know? All of these thoughts will come yeah. up. And the answer is, no, you're just a, like, the reason why criminals and, and uh, internal, external mm-hmm. get away with the stuff is because they're willing to do things that you just would do because you're a decent human being. Yeah. Right? They're just willing to, to give it a crack because there's that fraud triangle, which is um, motive, opportunity, and justification. Mm. Their motive might be they really like buying Pokemon. I don't know. I care what it is, right? They might have a pokey habit. That's actually probably what I was going to try to go with. A oh, pokey. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can spend money on Pokemon, right? Collectibles or something. Right. Um, the opportunity is you don't have an internal control. Like their zero account uh, enables them to just create a company and put their bank account number in there. Mm-hmm. They might do it accidentally once. Yeah. And then, you know, like they did a refund. They reprocessed it wrong and then out of, they just put in their own bank account number and they're like, Oh, and mm. then like, nothing happens for two weeks. And they realize, oh, I got away. I didn't know. Oh, nobody's coming. Should yeah. I say I haven't mentioned anything? And then they, when they're like, you know, they, 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 they have a car breakdown and they can't afford to repair it, they just go, oh, just borrow some money. Mm. Don't worry. The boss is rich. He drives an Audi. Yeah. Justification. Yeah. You know, and that's all it takes. Yeah. And now you've got a pattern of behavior. Then watch out for people who never take leave or never let anybody else do the books. Mm. That's really heavy. That's really That's heavy. right. I can make light of it now. It's six years ago. <laughs> As part of your I life paid, MBA. I paid back all the text <laughs> uh, or the, the, uh, the, um, tax. the tax. Um, she served her sentence. Uh, yeah. So. Um, Out in the world, a better person for it. Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> I don't know about her. <laughs> um, well, that's. That's really intense. And hopefully a lesson like that is going to uh, hit home for you a little bit. And as I just said, contribute to your life MBA. As long as you learn from it and you don't do the same thing again, then it's an investment in your overall knowledge. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. You know, probably more expensive than a university degree. Uh, $58,000. It was more than that. It was about 100K by the time you add everything up. Well, yeah. But but that is, it's it's invaluable because now I've got something I can actually share it. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not straight out of university with no actual life experience. Yep. I can point to people who are approximately my age, right? Yeah. And go, look, here's here's what I've lived and things that you might have to look out for. And this is one of the reasons why I do want to sit down with you and have a look through who's got access to what files. Yeah, yeah it's really boring. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm going to charge you a bunch of money for it. Mm. But if you don't do this at least once, you know, and then check it from time to time, mm then you don't know when somebody else is going to come into your organization. And this person, trust me, had brilliant references. Mm-hmm. Master of Business Studies, student mm-hmm. at Massey University. You know, she baked cookies. Mm-hmm. She looked like y- your, your favorite auntie, mm-hmm. right? You can't tell. No. You just can't tell. You, so, um, yeah, you, you just got to put these things in place and, and that'll give you a much better chance of, of um, you know, not tripping up and losing two or three years of your life and a hundred thousand bucks. Yeah, it's kind of that's a mic drop moment that one. Yeah. So Boom. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna leave some contact information for Daniel because obviously he walks the talk and he knows what he's talking about and he's got experience that relates to what you could potentially go through and ways that you can avoid that. I'll give a twenty percent discount to any uh, listeners of the podcast for a penetration test for their organisation. Nice, thank yep. you. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah, might even give them a book. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about this. Look at this. This is so nice to hold. You can go um, and buy that on Amazon. Uh, she'll be right, not a uh, cybersecurity guide for Kiwi business owners. Yep. Um, any profit I get from that, uh, you know, this is a huge amount. Uh, I, I pass on to um, my favorite uh, charity, which is uh, the Spirit of Adventure Trust. And I, <sighs> I volunteer with them. I try and get at least one voyage in a year for 10 days. I do more, but. The business needs me. Yeah. You can't be all the things all the time. No. No, but I have a good crack at it. You know, I'll sleep more when I did. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll leave Daniel's um, contact information because if you want to get started, either pick up the book and have a read, reach out to Daniel for your discount for your penetration test and um, and also your website. I noticed had lots of resources on it for people who have some questions and 
you want to start thinking those thoughts? Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a pretty crappy website. I don't spend a lot of time on it. I know I should, but hey, I prefer getting face to face with people and mm -hmm. meeting people and, and talk to them and, and then seeing how I can help them there, there and then. Cool. If they're interested, they'll click the contact link and get hold of me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Very good. Cheers, John.